I'm Anna Trippinal and today we're discussing what is responsible disengagement. First, what is disengagement? Essentially, this is the act of moving away from a business relationship or from a set of business relationships. There can be many reasons for companies choosing to disengage. Business reasons, for example, we're changing a, a product line, so we no longer need this supplier, or we want to reduce our costs, or we may have found a better quality provider elsewhere. Disengagement can be for legal and compliance reasons. We would be in breach of international sanctions or our own home country laws. We have no choice. Disengagement can be for reputational reasons. It's too risky for our reputation to be seen as associated with this business partner or this region or country. Disengagement, of course, can be for human rights reasons. We may see a supplier's working practices as inconsistent with our own policies and values. And we're seeing disengagement start for, for climate reasons, the growth in extreme weather events, which is making sourcing from a specific region more and more unpredictable, or changes in climate that are starting to impact the availability of commodities. So we can see there are a whole host of reasons for why a company might move away from doing business with another. So what is responsible disengagement intended to capture? Responsible disengagement means that as we leave a business partner behind, we consider the people we leave behind. We apply the business and human rights framework to the disengagement, the UN guiding principles on business and human rights and the OECD guidelines on multinational enterprises. We evaluate what can we do as a company to consider and act upon the impacts on people resulting from this disengagement. So, what's expected of a company to disengage responsibly? There are six questions that companies typically ask themselves. Number one, do I have human rights considerations built into the company's disengagement decision-making processes? If not, there may be changes I need to make, for example, to governance or standard operating procedures. Number two, does the actual decision to disengage need to be revisited? If the disengagement is for human rights reasons, it may actually leave people worse off. They may lose their jobs, the community may lose tax revenues, etc. It may be better to stay engaged, to play a role in improving the situation. The more severe the impacts, though, the more quickly we would need to see change. We can't stay engaged forever. Number three, are there ways in which the company can build its leverage to prevent or mitigate the human rights impacts connected to the disengagement? This could be one-on-one -on -one with the supplier or with other buyers or other organisations, even with local governments. For instance, actions that I have seen um, are gradually reducing a supplier's dependence on the company, giving advance notice of the termination, helping ensure that the supplier has the financial wherewithal to pay wages on a continued basis and severance if need be, um, empowering trade unions and worker associations to support the transition, or li liaising with other buyers or other organisations to help support the workers. Number four, how can the company engage, consult and communicate about the disengagement? The closer the engagement to those impacted by it, the better, and the more transparent the company can be, the better. And number five, does remedy need to be considered? Are there past impacts the company may be viewed as having contributed to? Are there impacts created from the disengagement the company may be viewed as having contributed to? Under the business and human rights framework, the buyer's responsibility to remedy stays the same even if the buyer has left. I have yet to work on a responsible disengagement case that feels easy. We always feel like we are juggling so many competing interests and we are caught between many rocks and many hard places. But applying the business and human rights framework can help significantly as it gives us a process to follow to help ensure that people are considered in the process. Thank you for watching and see you next time.